openness in nominations, and also providing a, a good number of choices to, uh, to select from. I think that we have other ways of addressing this. EPH is uh, one of them. Uh, I think this, this is an ill-considered uh, measure to try and address a problem that it will not address. Thank you. Speak. Can I get your name? Yeah, come on over and show the, mic uh, show the secretary your badge, yes. Uh, Ms. Hayes. Lisa Hayes, okay. first I think this is the absolute simplest system we can use if it were trying to sort of to reduce the power of a slate. A second and very important consideration of this system allows fewer blanks for people to fill in who look at a form and go, uh. So if they fill in a few, they don't feel like they have to fill in the whole form. Therefore, we get a broad number of choices from a number of different people without any one group dominating that list. And I think this is the simplest, straightforwardest way to actually improve our current system. Uh, before I call on somebody, how much time remains? There is just under two minutes of affirmative time and two and a half minutes negative. Okay, Mr. Cronengold. We're a speech against at this point. We've already heard the analysis of why this doesn't prevent parties and, in fact, encourages parties. Um, additionally, so we know it doesn't work um, in the long term. In addition, um, changing the number of nominations has consequences. Specifically, it makes it harder for us to reach convergence, um, and therefore lowering the number of nominations hurts things, particularly in the case of EPH, where every nomination you give is support for another possibility that can get on the ballot and can defeat slates. Additionally, we already have five works to consider in each category. I don't want more works to consider. I don't want more stuff to read. That was against. Uh, in favor. Um, there. You. you. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. Yes, Mr. Horton. I'm Rich Horton. Uh, I want to say I don't think having more works, more good works to read is a negative. I think it's a feature. Uh, and I don't understand the other attitude, but I, I accept it. I believe the key point in favor of these types of systems, 4, 6, 5, 8, whatever you want, is that they acknowledge that none of us can really cover the entire field. It's just too big. So we nominate a subset, do the best with what we have, and accept that there will be a broader range of nominees to bring in a more diverse and wider set of potential winners. Thank you. Speech in favor, Mr. Jared Dashoff. Uh, Mr. Dashoff has moved to end the debate. There is more than one minute of debate left. Sorry. What, for what purpose does the member rise? Now, a motion to amend. A member was attempting to move a motion to amend. Amend yields to previous question. It's a previous question to close debate is a senior motion, and we have to resolve that first. Uh, on the motion, there was a second to that, yes? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, on the motion to end the debate, uh, two thirds being necessary to end the debate. All those in favor of ending the debate, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the chair believes there's more than two-thirds in the affirmative. There being two-thirds in the affirmative, the debate is closed. Uh, you can, nope. oh no, that's right, Close, in, in previous question also cuts off all of the amendments and so forth as well. Yeah, that's right, it's only when the debate clock runs out that you could still make an undebatable amend. So, thank you, thank you. All right, uh, I'm gonna try it first by a show of hands. On four and six, as it, a, a parliamentary inquiry. Mr. Quinn will come and state his parliamentary inquiry. I was, I mean, I, I think we were under a false impression there because um, in, in previous debates, we have been able to make motions. 
um, after. The, 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 the chair will explain this a little further. The parliamentarian reminded him. There is a difference between the debate clock running out and a motion for the previous question. Previous question shuts off the debate and the making of any, subs any further subsidiary motions. Running the debate clock out merely stops the debate, but it does allow making subsidiary motions. For what purpose does the member rise? A, okay, a motion to extend debate is not in order. Wait a minute, no, no, it's possible, yes. You want to reconsider the motion for the previous question? Yeah. Were you one of the people who voted in favor of ending the debate? Uh, that's an undebatable motion. Is there a second to reconsidering the previous question? This is undebatable. A majority being necessary to bring us back to the vote to close debate. This is only to say we want to take the vote on a closed debate again. All those in favor of reconsidering the motion to close debate, raise your hands. Hands down. Those who do not want to reconsider the vote, hands down. The negative has it. The, the motion to reconsider fails. For what purpose does the member rise, Mr. Quinn? Like Mr. Quinn, you've got to come to the microphone. I'd like to move to suspend the rules and allow in a single amendment. Yeah, suspend the rules. Uh, yeah, you sus to suspend the rules uh, takes precedence over anything out of it, which if it arises. Uh, is there a second? Uh, all those in favor, it's not debatable. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow the member out here, uh, where are you? Sorry, yes, the member to make an amendment. All those in favor of uh, a two-thirds vote being necessary, all those in favor of suspending the rules to make that amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. There is less than two-thirds in the affirmative. The motion to suspend the rules fails. This is the adoption motion on four and six. All those in favor of adopting four and six, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. That's close enough. We'll have to do a serpentine count. Is there any person in this room who does not understand how a serpentine count works? I just, just, I just show your hands if you don't understand. Do you do, okay. We are going to, okay, you probably people who came in after the last recess. We will be calling for those people in favor of adopting this motion to stand. We will move through the audience back and forth to the back wall, then we'll come up here and do it again in the middle, then we'll do it again on the right. And as we come to your spot in your row, say the next number, we'll start with one, and count off, say your number, then sit down, and we'll go back and forth through the audience until we have all the affirmatives, and then we'll do it again for the negatives. And even if the result is obvious by the time we reach the end, both sides get a chance to vote. All those in favor of adopting four and six, please rise. Anybody on the head table? Nobody on the head table, and so we'll start over here. I heard 12 twice. Was that 25? I know. I was. I couldn't hear her say it. 28 in this section. Wait for the sergeant at arms to get down here, and we'll start the next section. Okay, we are at 64, and we'll come back down here and start it again. Those members who have phones on, silence them, please.
affirmative. 86 in the affirmative. Those opposed to adopting four and six, please rise. Anybody on the hand starting with you? One. Number one here. Twenty-nine so far. Coming back down here before we restart. Okay, 59, and we'll come up here and begin it lost. at 59. Over there, over there. Yes. The chair was starting to wonder if we were, if we'd hit a neighborhood of 86. Okay, there are 82 in the affirmative and 86. 86. There are 86 in the affirmative and 82 in the negative. There being a majority in the affirmative, four and six is adopted and passed on to next year's WorldCon for uh, ratification. 86 to 82. And we need a recess at this point. And um, can we do it at a two-minute recess and move on? I, uh, well, it's a five-minute recess. Then this meeting is in recess until no earlier than 12:40.